Redback coming to you live from Vulcan Gas Company here in Austin, Texas for a brand new episode of Kill Tony. Give it up for Tony Ratcliffe! <laughs> the fuck is up, Austin, Texas? You ready to do this shit or what? Yippee! Make some noise for Brian Redband, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey. Kill Tony live. Brought to you by the Red Rose, the Yellow Rose, Deep Eddie Vodka, Gel Blaster, and the best security guard service in all of Austin. They're called the Austin Security Guard Service, believe it or not. <laughs> How about a hand for the goddamn band, huh? Brought to you by Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey, the great Michael Gonzalez on the drums, John D's on the keys, D Madness on the bass guitar, Matt Muling on the electric, and Paul Deemer on the horns, everybody. Oh, another fun episode coming at you at a thousand miles an hour. But before we do, here's a little bit more from the amazing sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey, y'all. Today's episode is brought to you by sheathunderwear.com. And I love this sponsor. Look, let me be honest here. We say that about all the ads that we read. We say that we love it. We say this and that. These things, these sheath underwear have literally been connected to my butt, Red Band's butt, our genitals, everybody who we work with closely's genitals and butts, every single episode that you've ever listened to. Once sheath underwear came into our lives, we literally threw away all our fancy brands and all these popular things and this and that because there is no doubt they are literally the most comfortable materials you could possibly have next to your precious, precious precious genitalia. Red Band. Yeah, they're high quality. They can be worn as boxers or briefs. They have that moisture wicking, you know, for my big thighs, and it keeps everything cool and separated. Fly a lot, hate nuts stuck to your legs? I do. Well, they're great for working out also, and it's comfortable. So for 2023, step up your underwear game. Graduate from holes, loose fabrics, cheap cotton, or overpriced designer brands, and buy the greatest underwear that has ever graced the balls of men. Sheath underwear, the underwear of legends. That is correct. Sheath can be worn as regular boxer briefs or you can use the incredibly high-tech sheath pouch to keep everything separated. I believe it was Offspring in the 1990s that said, you gotta keep them separated. Personally, I don't keep them separated. There's just an extra pouch in front of my uh, Italian stallion that just acts as an extra guard, an extra layer of comfort. I swear to you, you have not seen me or heard me not wear these underwear for years. I wear them every day and I swear to you, they are the most comfortable pair of briefs I've ever worn. So go to sheathunderwear.com and use the promo code Tony. You're gonna get 20% off your next order. Once more, sheathunderwear.com, promo code Tony for 20% off. Let me be next to your stuff. You guys ready to start tonight's show or what? You're gonna have to do better than that. You guys ready to start this mamma jamma? We are. The number one live podcast on planet fucking Earth. Every single week, we have one or two of the greatest comedians on planet Earth. There's only enough room for one tonight with one of the most brand spanking new Netflix specials out now called What A Day. Make some noise. The return of one of our favorites, the great Tom Papa. Yeah. Tom Papa. One of the best in the world. He's been here before, folks. We're gonna do the goddamn dance again. Tom Papa, fresh off of Netflix's What A Day. What A Day. Still out there on the front page of your Netflix. And here he is joining <laughs> us in beautiful good Austin, Texas. Good to see you, Texas. good folks. Tom nice Papa, to be back. Everybody. Tom made me a loaf of bread. 
Just as I was talking about how hard it is to not be fat in this town, he literally, at that moment, walked in with a eight-pound single loaf of bread for me. So it's, gonna... it's good. My bread won't make you fat. Is that true? It's true. How do you do that? Uh, it's real bread, so it breaks down its own sugar, so you'll be all right. Oh, shit. All right. Okay. Yeah. I was going to fucking give it to Red Band, but now that I know that, he doesn't give a fuck. One more loaf of bread ain't going to leave a dent in this fucking <laughs> Rolls Royce. Uh, Tom, you've been on this show before. You know how it works. I actually want to announce we have a record. You guys are here on a record-setting night. 159 human beings signed up for the opportunity to get pulled out of this bucket. That is the most ever in Austin, Texas. Wow. We've been here for over two years, so that's pretty fucking crazy. Uh, it's getting bigger. There's literally not enough room to hold the comedians. So some are literally standing out on the sidewalk right now, hoping that their name gets called. Uh, if it does, they get 60 seconds uninterrupted. You know their time is up. When you hear the sound of a kitten, that means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry West Hollywood bear, which is a loud noise which just interrupts their set and gives me a chance to take over after their minute. After that, I interview them. We find out more about them, what's special about them. And uh, it's all improvised. There is nothing fucking written down anywhere. Look, look, it's all blank. It says William, David, Hans, Jared, Tom Papa, Red Rose, Yellow Rose, Deep Eddie, Gel Blaster, Austin Security Guard Service, Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey. It starts blank. You guys ready to get through tonight's episode? Here we go. There's only one way to start it, ladies and gentlemen. The same guy every week. We have three regulars on the show that write and perform a brand new minute every single week. A ridiculously hard job. This is a brand new minute from Hans Kip. What is up, Austin? It's good to be here. My name is Hans Kim. I'm a skinny boy. Skinny boys unite and huddle together for warmth. I'm so skinny that when I'm spooning a black chick, I can only cover one cheek at a time. <laughs> I love dating black women because I know there's at least one black man in her life that doesn't want to be any part of her life. <laughs> um, but yeah, love uh, how liberals are so dumb nowadays. What a bunch of idiots they are. Uh, I love how liberals will be like, I'm not homophobic. I don't even care what goes on in the privacy of your own home. Why is that a requirement to not be homophobic? I can't be curious. Like, does the bottom wear a condom just in case he doesn't want to get the sheets dirty? Does the bottom stay hard during the whole relationship or is it like an orca's fin in captivity? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, there it is. There was a long pause there. <laughs> I didn't know if it was over or not. <laughs> I feel like there was another one in the chamber. There, there might be. Was there any more to that? Uh, not really. Um, <laughs> Any more of your gay fantasies you want to talk about? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, I wonder if the bottom wears a condom because I would not know at all. <laughs> Does like a, is like doggy style like missionary sex for gay people? That's actually a really good question. Thank you. That is. I think that is missionary, and their other way would be, I guess, like froggy style a little bit, right? Because they really have to, they have to really arch their back a little bit backwards, right? Get the stuff out of the way. There's a lot going on down there. Missionary for missionary could be dangerous, I'd imagine, for uh, gay guys who you run into the balls, <laughs> run right in there, just ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Wow. If you were going to have sex with a man, how would you do it, Hans? Um, I would do the old uh, flip over and pin him, pin him to the mattress. Wow, look at you. 
My goodness. <laughs> the old, the, you know, get on your stomach and uh, let me pound away <laughs> on the rear. <laughs> that old chestnut. <laughs> So you want the guy just laying flat, no arch, no elevation whatsoever, and you're just going to sort of like just <laughs> up and down it. Yes. It's the old vertical press. The old yes. George Foreman grill, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> very interesting, Hans. A uh, very anti-liberal set. Uh, <laughs> do you really hate liberals, or are you just performing in Texas on a Monday night? <laughs> I hate liberals. Um... <laughs> I mean, half your sets you say you are a liberal, though. Well, I'm like a communist. So. <laughs> All right. What do you mean by that? Um, I feel like the workers should kill the masters <laughs> in the violent uprising. The masters. <laughs> I don't think you know what a communist is. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So what else has been going on this week, Hans? I've been... Um, Headlining in Las Vegas and Salt Lake City, I actually um, did really great. Pretty much sold out. Uh-huh. Um, 99%. Thank you. Um, I also went to a strip club, spent about $380. Wow. It, <laughs> about, <laughs> about $380. Yeah. And 57 cents. Yeah. You mean exactly $380. Or else you would have said about $400. <laughs> Uh, so, was this in Salt Lake City? Yeah, no, so, it was in Vegas. Oh, you went to a Vegas strip club. Yeah. Very with, interesting. I've never been to a Vegas strip club. But what can you tell us about it? What, how uh, is it different than other strip clubs that you've been to? Uh, well, it's like bigger. It's like a lot of neon lights. And oh, well, okay, that's everyone. <laughs> I mean, I, I honestly like the yellow rose and the red rose a lot better. That's true. That's true. I like, like how uh, you said yellow rose first on that one, <laughs> Hans. Uh, okay. So about $380. How do you spend $380? Does that, is that all in ones? Did you go to a private room or something? I Wings. got a, a private room treatment. Um, got the Treatment? Touch. Treatment? Yeah. <laughs> like a spa? Like a sauna and a, a spa retreat. <laughs> That's why it was so spacious. It had waterfalls and it was a spa. I got the $380 spa package. Uh, what happened in this special room, Hans? I got to touch some nipples. Ooh. Okay. What did this girl look like? She was like skinny and Latina and um, I was there with my boy Eddie um, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Hold on. This is fresh. One week after Tom, we found out last week that he had his first ever threesome. And it was, there was him, and a girl, and another guy. And here we are, one week later, finding out right now, fresh to all of our ears, that you that there was another guy in the room with you? Yes. Wow. <laughs> He was, he was a nice guy. He was a nice guy? Yeah. Was it his nipples you were touching? <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck was this guy? Who's, who's Eddie? It's my boy Eddie. Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize you were Italian. It's my boy Eddie. What are, what's with all the questions? <laughs> Eddie the nipple. <laughs> Eddie <laughs> sweet nips. Eddie is a sweet Mexican man. He is really in tune with the uh, strip club culture there. Ah, did you meet Eddie in Vegas? Yes. <laughs> How soon before you went to the strip club did you meet Eddie? About 30 minutes before. <laughs> where, di where did you meet Eddie? My, uh, my boy. <laughs> yeah, one of my besties and a man that I can trust. <laughs> Old Eddie on the streets of Las Vegas. Old Eddie that just drags you into strip club and makes you spend more money than any of your friends have ever heard of you spending before. <laughs> He's a good friend of mine now. Um, he works at the strip. Uh, he works at the comedy club, uh -huh. which I probably shouldn't have said. You're good. It's okay. It's okay. Wise guys. Yes. And, and then but next thing you know, he's like, let's go to a fucking strip club. Did he spend any of his money? Yeah, he bought me two beers. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Your set is starting to make a lot more sense. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of questions, a lot of feelings. <laughs> So did you wear a condom while on bottom with this guy? 
<laughs> no, we we kept it platonic. <laughs> yeah. He was a nice guy. We had some good talks about, uh, I don't know, what we talked about. Right. You know. <laughs> you, <don't>, you know. <laughs> do you have AIDS? Uh, <laughs> Hans, somehow you're able to do it every single week. A new minute, yet another very, very interesting interview. You are a fascinating man. It's so amazing to watch you grow every single week. Make some noise for the great Hans yeah, King. Thank you. And like that, we have begun. Now, and only now, does my hand go into the bucket of destiny. These are people that we don't know, but maybe we've met before. Maybe it's somebody's first time. Maybe it's a 20-year veteran that's coming here to showcase one minute right now. It could be anybody, any shape, any size, any mental health. Your first comedian tonight out of the bucket goes by the name of Jaden Sharp. Jaden Sharp. And like that, we shall meet a human being. Jaden Sharp. Here he is, everybody, Jaden Sharp, everyone. Growing up, I think my youth pastor was a racist because he only molested the white kids. You guys ever get high and then have like those, uh, like the really good high thoughts? Like, what if dudes synced up like women did on their periods? But like, instead of bleeding, we got boners. Like, if one dude got hard, we all got hard. <laughs> There's no way in fuck men could work with kids. That's not happening. Combat sports? That's a different angle, my guys. There would be not a... Actually, that's just porn at that point. Or so I think. Or maybe not. Other high thought I had. Why is it that when you say don't you dare, that makes sense? But do not you dare? Zero. Right? Right? That's going to fuck with you for a good week now. Like, I have yet to figure out what it is with this, but that's my time, guys. Thank you. All right. There you go. Jaden Sharp. Yes, sir. All right. Welcome. You've been on this show before, correct? I have. You I work have. here at Vulcan Gas Company. I do. Right. Are you working tonight? I am working right now. What, wow. exactly, <laughs> what, what, what exactly do you do here? Uh, I bartend here. Okay. Yep. I bartend Thursday through Sunday. All right. Thanks. And you're up on the second floor. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, how do you like that job? <laughs> uh, about the same as anyone else likes their job, I guess. Uh, Nick's. Okay, uh, I'm going to cut you off there. We've never actually watched somebody get fired before, so I'm going to stop you there. The economy's tough, so I'm going to save you. I shouldn't have asked you that in the first place. I took a chance. Yeah. My bad. <laughs> All right, Jaden. Uh, tell us something interesting about your life that we don't know. Uh, recently, I, uh, I started uh, playing bass. Oh, wow. Yeah, I get bored as hell, getting high as shit, wondering about people and boners and whatnot, so I figure, why not do something else with... What about boners? <laughs> thinking you about say? people's boners from my set. What? <laughs> you think yeah. about... What? You yeah, talk, think, you yeah, talk think, about yeah, boners yeah, during yeah. a set. Oh, gotcha, yeah. Got yeah. Yep. Boners right. syncing yeah. up. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. A little bit of a callback there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very good. So how long have you been playing bass for altogether? Uh, probably about six months now. Six months. How yeah. often do you practice? Like two to three hours a day. Wow, two to three hours a day. You're like sea madness. <laughs> 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 I got you. <laughs> uh -uh, you gonna today. you gonna let him play? Oh shit! Deep right. Madness wants to hear you play. Yeah. I wasn't even gonna ask. I don't I don't fuck with Deep Madness. Yeah. But since he's suggesting it, ladies and gentlemen. Get your little ass over there, Jaden. You're good, D. What's the song? Which what do you go with? What are you gonna when play? When the pressure's for us on, what's tonight? Oh, Deep Madness is whispering something. He's like, just press that one button, it'll play itself. <laughs> Deep Madness is trying to help his homie here. You're good, D, you're good. Oh shit, he's sitting down. You wanna sit? I got a chair. He's cool. Yeah. All right. 
A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on Jaden right now. The best bass player in town is literally hovering over him right now. <laughs> One of the best bass players on planet Earth, almost on his leg. Uh, this is not easy, folks. What's a good bass song? I don't know. Barney Miller. I don't know. What do you got, Jaden? You, you're Primus. practicing two to three hours a day. He's officially sweating now, ladies and gentlemen. Physical wet sweat has all of a sudden appeared on Jaden's forehead. I'd imagine his fingertips are sweaty, too. The pressure is on. Ladies and gentlemen, playing a little bass for you. Make some noise for Jaden Sharp, everyone. <laughs> Maybe I should suggest four to five hours a day of practice. <laughs> Jaden. But he's a really good bartender. Yeah. <laughs> he does about it. He likes playing bass about as much as anybody else likes playing bass, I guess. <laughs> wow. I, n I never thought I would say this, but give that instrument back to the superior blind man. <laughs> <laughs> Close your goddamn eyes, motherfucker, <laughs> is the prescription that Dr. D. Madness has written here today. <laughs> Jaden. Jaden did just okay at two art forms in five minutes, for those of you paying attention. This is incredible. Oh. Jaden, what else have you been doing other than have kind of playing bass? <laughs> uh. So I just recently uh, started working on a uh, comic book series with one of my friends. A what uh, series? A comic book series. Okay, comic books. Yeah, we're uh, we're basing it off of like uh, events that happened like off of Sixth Street. Oh wow! So we figure, why not? I mean, with just like the things that have happened here, like just, like during South by last season, uh -huh. it was we had, we had a twerking competition yeah. here. Exactly. So, can you give us just a? Can you give us just a taste of what, a, like, some of the, like, is there, like, Fentanyl Man or something like that? Oh, there is. The yeah. Sixth Street comic book kind of sounds like fun. Like, oh, oh, it's the pedicab killer. <laughs> oh, no, we have the, uh, we have the Austin Chicken Man, a homeless dude that runs around here with a chicken. He's featured in this. Uh -huh. and is then, he a good guy or a bad guy? Oh, he's the, he's the consulate. He's the guy they go to when they need advice. Wow, oh, like a Yoda. Exactly. The also, Austin Yoda. Exactly. He also gives them really good acid. That's the other half of it. Because that's one of the more fun parts on, like, when you go to the other bars on 6th Street, uh -huh. bartenders are just loaded on everything. Right. And it's, it's a good time. Right. It's the best people watching. Right. Wow. You just got closer to getting fired. Uh, <laughs> you literally just plugged every other bar on 6th Street just then. For a really fun time, go to any other bar on this street. <laughs> <laughs> They're loaded. They'll give you anything. <laughs> the only person sweating harder than you right now is Nick, the owner of this club. <laughs> I love it. Wow, Jaden, this is incredible. Uh, I absolutely love it. How's your love life going? What's that like? You're out there creating comic book series, so I'm guessing... Well, last night I got blackout drunk and woke up in some girl's house, so that was pretty cool. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was, uh, a, it was a, a girl's house? It was. Okay. And yeah. what did she look like when you woke up next to a girl that you don't even remember? I did. My, oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't know. Wildly close. <laughs> was not the best. I would not recommend it again. Right. So yeah. you don't remember anything? No. I remember getting home. And then waking up this morning, and then my roommate told me, you called me. Wow. And I was like, all right. And he's like, you went out like four times last night. What was going on? And Wow. I, yeah. Zero my recollection. Goodness. Is it still wow. called blacked out if you're light-skinned? <laughs> no, it's just lights out. <laughs> it lights out. Hey, I like that. <laughs> and you say all the other bartenders are always wasted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and his roommate's telling him he went out four times last <laughs> night. Came back, went out again. I love it. All right, Jaden Sharp, uh, very fun times. Congratulations. Thank fun you, performance. Sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, good All set. Right. All right, thank you, guys. Do you have one of these yet? You do. There he goes. Jaden Sharp, everybody. All right.
We have a special guest here, ladies and gentlemen. There's only been one man to ever be, uh, to ever win the prestigious golden ticket in the city of Austin, Texas. He's visiting from Canada. He's what they call, uh, what is it, globally, mentally challenged or something like that. He's a legend on the show. Here with a new minute, this is Jared Nathan, everybody. If, if I join a military, I would automatically be put into the special forces. <laughs> but I would only be handed a super soaker. Cause I already have a automatic weapon that my rounds shoot spit. I read an article that terrorist organizations are now recruiting people with special needs or terrorist attacks or as we call it backpack boom boom day I don't think the 71 virgins are ready for me Okay, Jared Nathan. There was a lot there. Did you say 71 virgins? 70, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's 72. You're like Hans Kim I with your numbers tonight. I did disability discounts to take one off. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely. There's got to be one virgin that's like, I ain't fucking that guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jared, that was a great set, very military-themed. Why do you think that happened this week? Did you watch a movie or something like that? Did you watch fucking Ram? I watched... I don't know, I was in the... I was hanging out with people... I was hanging out with people who were in the military this week and I just oh. logged some things. Okay, very, very cool. That's amazing. We some... Doing some me? fucking service. Entertaining yeah. entertaining the troops. You know, every day is service. Some, um, yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. Very good. Did you guys have a push-up competition? Because I got all my money on you. <laughs> very, very strong. We got that fame nobody can fucking talk about, you know? <laughs> Jared, what else happened this week? Tell us awesome. more about your life. <laughs> Today, this week? You bought a lawsuit this week? No. Okay. <laughs> I had some bad luck, Tony. Oh, you had some bad luck. Yeah. Okay, tell us about it. <laughs> I got kicked out of a restaurant for being intoxicated. You got kicked out of a restaurant for being intoxicated? Yeah. <laughs> But all I, all I think it was b -b 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 bad. But Tony, b -b 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 bad. <laughs> b -b 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 bad. To the motherfucking bone. <laughs> na 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 na. You're goddamn motherfucking right. That is what it's all about. This guy rolls with it like fucking nobody else. I love it. So, bad luck, you got intoxicated and kicked out of a no. restaurant. I just was ordering some 
Buffalo wings. I can't believe it took us this long to figure out that bad to the bone is the secret missing element to Jared Nathan. <laughs> Woo! That's the name of your first special, everybody. Jared Nathan. Oh my God. I could do this all night. To the other 158 comedians that signed up, I apologize. <laughs> We're just gonna talk to Jared and play Bad to the Bone for the next two hours. No, 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 no. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Is that what you're doing? No, 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 no. Okay. So. Tell uh, us. I can't believe I'm you. hungry, Tony. <laughs> I can't believe you ordered b- b- buffalo wings. <laughs> <laughs> True story. True fucking story. I b- b- believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make me some b- 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 bread? <laughs> oh my God. Holy shit. <laughs> All right, maybe it's an eight-minute special that I was pitching. Maybe it's not an hour. So you ordered chicken wings. Buffalo wings. Buffalo wings. Total different thing. The wings of a buffalo, Red Band. They're not chicken. We know this. Right, Jared? With blue cheese, motherfucker. That's right. (laughs) Blue. Bone in. (laughs) Absolutely. So you order buffalo wings, you get your blue cheese, then what happens? I try to order buffalo wings, but (laughs) I started like a motherfucker, and the person behind the counter couldn't understand me, so I did my robot voice. Hi, I would like some buffalo wings, please. And th- and they're like, holy shit, this guy is fucked up. <laughs> oh my god, this is th- we've never had a guy this drunk. What time of the day was this? Ten o'clock at night. Oh wow, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a bad time. <laughs> so you order your wings, you order them like a robot, and then what happens? They told me stop yelling. Oh my god. And I said I wouldn't have to do this if you understood me the first four times I tried to order, motherfucker. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Very interesting. So how did they tell you to leave? When did you know you were getting kicked out? When it kind of pointed to the fucking door. <laughs> I couldn't understand the guy because I can't speak Spanish. Oh, you guys were having... I saw the fucking pointing, so I took a hint. You guys were having a little Mexican standoff there. No, 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 no. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Should we give this place a shout out so we can? Uh, yes. Yeah, should we give a boycott it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a motherfucking wing stop. Oh! Boo. <laughs> On the count of three. On the count of three, everybody say "fuck you, wing stop." One, two, three. Fuck you. There you go. All their locations all around America. I curse you, Wingstop. You, Wingstop, are bad to the bone. Jared, we love you. You're a fucking killer. Somehow, with all of your disabilities or whatever they call it, you seem to be one of the most able fucking comedians regularly on the show. No, Jared... As I say, Abel... Hey, I'd love to have you on the Secret Show Thursday. He's on the Secret Show Thursday. 
Oh my goodness. Back to the bucket we go. You guys having fun out there? Your next comedian goes by the name of Jovan Afzali. Jovan Afzali. Jovan. Here they come. Here's Jovan. One more time for Jovan, everybody. Hello. This fuckface looking at me like you've never seen someone speak in cursive. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Sorry. I like that voice. I feel like you can get away with saying like horrible shit like, um... I hate gay people. Uh, there's only two genders. Okay. I say that because I might be gay. I don't know if it's happening. I, uh... Dude, I was taking a... I was, started, I was taking like a little bit of a poop the other day, and, um... I started getting an erection. I don't know if that's ever happened to the gentleman. But it was, it was, I was confused. It was a confusing moment for a young man. I'm just thinking there, like, Jesus, like, why am I the hardest at the same point of the day that my ass is the widest? What the fuck is going on with me? <laughs> so I, uh, dude, I, no, and I'm not, like, scared. So I went and I watched a little gay porn and I saw this video. It was cool. It was like a, it was a video. It was a dude who was having sex with a dude who was having sex with a girl. And, uh, I mean, I liked it. It didn't turn me on or nothing, but it was cool. It was like, have you ever been on the highway? You see like a tow truck that's towing a tow truck that's like towing a Civic or some shit? <laughs> like artistically, it was pleasing. I, that's all I thought. Uh, that was a minute. Uh, okay. Bringing it together at the end there, Javon Absal. Like an NFL playoff game, we thought that was over halfway through, and yeah, then all of a too. sudden, Likewise. a big comeback for you, Jovan. Yep. You saved all your punchlines for the 57th oh, you're a lot in and the 59th cool. second. Oh, and then you step on jokes. Very good. Great, Wait. great talent. It's good yeah, to be no, here I'm with the grandson of Professor Snape. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome to be here oh, with fucking oh. Edward Normal Hands. Very good. <laughs> I like your style, Jovan. Let's talk about it. How old are you? I'm um, uh, uh, 21. 21 years old. Are you really 21? Or are you yeah, just yeah. saying no, that? No, I'm 21. Yeah. Okay. What do you do? What's up with your life? You I um, uh, I don't know. Lately, I've just been living in a bus, kind of trying to find some girls to you know have in there, but not a lot of girls like that stuff. I don't know why. But uh, really? I've just been doing that, and I, uh, I sell popsicles on the black market, and besides that, I just kind of live it up, you yeah. know. Okay, that was another attempt at a joke. No, it wasn't a end. joke. I sell like uh, popsicles with like dirty jokes on the stick. You might see me around. If it's not warm enough yet, but once it's warmer, yeah. You I'll really do that? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. You, I went, dude. One time I went to a, like a, a gay festival. I sold like it was like four hundred dollars in like four hours. It was crazy. Some dude with Molly came and touched my ass, gave me twenty bucks. He'd even buy a popsicle, but it was nice. <laughs> All right. That's pretty cool. Do you make these popsicles? Yeah, yeah, I make the popsicles. I like, uh, I used to like try to get all fancy with recipes and make like these Indian like creamy popsicles, but no one gives a fuck what they taste like. So I just do put minute made in it. Do you write the jokes for the sticks? I write the jokes or I'll like, if someone has like an awesome wine liner, I'll be like, yo, I'll give you five bucks to use it and uh, I'll put your like Instagram tag on the, on the stick. How big are your popsicle sticks? <laughs> <laughs> big enough to make $400 at a gay festival. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow. I love it. Jovan, 21, slinging popsicles. What's this bus that you say you're living in? It's like a, uh, yeah, it's like a school bus. I don't know. You guys know it. So you live bus. in it? Yeah, I live in you it. You own it's it? Like, yeah, I own it. Yeah. All by yourself? Yep, yeah, just me and myself, yeah. It's no, no there's no, like, victims in there, if that's what you're wondering. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. I was kind of asking about it. Although that. I did do some stupid shit, because I, like, uh, I was... I love that that's what you call roommates, is <laughs> victims. <laughs> <laughs> What were you going to say there? I, uh, well, because I was living in Denver before I came to Austin for like a little uh -huh. bit, and I, um, I was like, I had like a bunch of chicken in there, and it stays fresh, and then I forgot that it's warmer down here, so it's, it got moldy. It wasn't wing stuff, was like, it? No, it wasn't wing stuff. <laughs> okay. Just regular thighs, yeah. Regular chicken. All right. Javon, you're 21 years old. How long have you been doing stand up comedy? Two years. Two years. All of it here in Austin, or were you doing it in. Uh, I lived in uh, Albany, New York for a little bit, and then Ooh. I moved, yeah, and then I moved to Denver. <laughs> And I don't know what it was about that place. I, maybe I just didn't fit in or whatever. I, it was like too much weed, not enough oxygen. I didn't really like that place, so I moved down here. Right, mm -hmm. right. What do you do for fun in Austin, Texas? I mean, I just got here on Thursday. I've been trying to find some. Is there like a place to play chess around here? I like chess. Uh, <laughs> what, I don't know. I don't have a lot of. I'm not good at really having fun, honestly. Yeah. Okay. Smoke did you have the bus in Albany? No, I lived. I lived there. I was building it in Albany and stuff. Yeah. When did you get the bus? I think I got it around, I don't know, probably a year ago. Yeah. 
And oh. then uh, built it for a while, and then I left in like November. I've been. Is it nice? Bumming around. No, it's ghetto as fuck. You don't want to be there. Yeah. But it runs. It runs. Yeah, yeah, it runs. I actually, it broke down once in Terre Haute, Indiana, and uh, Jesus Christ, I didn't think I knew about meth heads, and then I fucking I went there, and so dude, some dude with no legs. He asked me if I could like um, hang out with him for like a day, and it, honestly, I did because there was just no one to really. <laughs> this dude, this homeless dude, Kenny, I related to him. Yeah, I don't know. Did you play chess? No, we didn't, we didn't play chess. Uh, I I did ask him though. Did you play you, checkers? No, uh, sometimes, Easy to jump. Sometimes I like to. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes I play checkers to like classical music and think I'm fancy, but besides that, no. Okay. All right, let me ask you this. Where do you have this bus parked in beautiful Austin, Texas? Um, right now, it's, uh, where did I put it? It's, <laughs> it's on 7th Street by, uh, by some, uh, some taco truck. I don't know. Okay, but where do you normally park it? Where Wherever do you the homeless sleep? people aren't. Just anywhere. They'll look safe. I don't know. It's kind of easy to find places around here. As long as it's like I'll pay $12 for a parking sometimes. My friend has an apartment. I'll park in his complex. I try to move around so I don't seem like sketchy, you know? Okay. <laughs> All right. The old non- Is there a kitchen in there? There's an Instapot, but I, I'm how here. do you make the po- how do you make the popsicles? Oh, I have this big ass popsicle machine. It can make like probably like 80 popsicles in an hour, which is way too much volume for me. But I, uh, I'm not a good investor. Popsicles an hour. Yeah. Oh yeah. Red Band is hard as a rock right now. <laughs> <laughs> so you're making popsicles in this fucking yes, yes, what popsicles. you describe as a ghetto bus. Yeah, especially from the inside. It's a lot that ghetto from the outside, but you get in there, you're like, wow, holy shit. Are these all dirty jokes that you write that are on the sticks? I already fucking told you this, dude. It's like... (laughs) Some of them I write. Some of them I write. This guy is so used to talking to legless homeless people that he fucking comes into the king's court. Oh, my bad. I didn't even realize you have legs. My bad. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, they are... um, Oh, God. They're good popsicles. So stupid. Do you have... Do you have solar and like battery? And yeah, I got four and solar panels on there. Yeah, but uh, I don't know what they're doing. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting, Jovan Avzali. What uh, what ethnicity are you? That's an interesting. Uh, name. I'm half white, half Afghani. Uh, don't worry, we didn't do it. Calm down, just. All right, <laughs> half white, half Afghani. So your dad's Afghani, mom's yeah, white. Yeah. Okay. okay. Where did they meet? Um, they they were like hippies for a while. I think they met in uh, at Rainbow Gathering. Yeah. Right. I was probably conceived in a tent, honestly, but whatever. A couple whippets. Right. So the bus is an upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> no, for like, dude, for like the first six years of my life, I lived on a bus because they did the same shit. Yeah, fucking, I know all about a fucking little shower at McDonald's or uh... I just did a little bit of math here, Javon, yeah. and I realized that your white mother hooked up with your Afghani father about a year after 9-11. Yeah. <laughs> So let me ask you, do you think your mom hates America? <laughs> I, think, I think she probably hated her parents more, but yeah. Right. Probably hated her parents more. Right. But yeah, no, I was born 10 days after 9-11. I have this joke, I don't, okay, my son, but I was born like, uh, yeah, 9-11 was like my gender reveal party or whatever. <laughs> oh, look, there's twins. All right, that's all right. Yeah, I like that. You have, you have some great jokes for a 21-year-old. I love, uh, I love finding a uh, new talent out of this fucking bucket. You want a joke book? I love one. That'd there be you cool. go. You got one of those. Jovan Avzali. On to the next one we go. Another bucket pool coming at you. Oh, and a gel blaster. Look at that from the lovely people over at Gel Blaster. Jovan's going to fucking... Got it's going it. to be a school bus shooting happening. <laughs> How old do you feel, though? <laughs> Two days after 9-11, he was born? <laughs> yeah. My goodness. All right, your next comedian goes by the name of Danny Guerrero, everybody. Danny Guerrero is next on Kill Tony. Here he comes. Um, um. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for him. It's Danny Guerrero, everybody. Hey, I'm fucking crazy, bro. You get in a fight with me, man. You'll fuck around and leave with 12 hickeys on your neck. Yeah, you may have whooped my ass, but I just ruined your marriage of 10 years. <laughs> Try explaining that to your girl when you get home. I don't know, babe. I started swinging. This guy just latched onto my neck. <laughs> I'm fucking lonely, guys. <laughs> just earlier today, bro, I picked up a scam likely call. So, hey, man, I'll give you the last four of my social if you just ask me how my day was. 
pretend you care a little bit and you can have it all. <laughs> Been doing a bunch of gay shit, bro. A lot of gay shit. <laughs> I just started wearing my seatbelt last week. <laughs> I just want to be held, please. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> all right, guys. It's my time. Wow. That is how you do it. Danny Guerrero, nice to meet you, sir. Welcome. Hi, Tony. Hell yeah, that was fucking fantastic, dude. Great job. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, about to be like probably two years in April. Okay. Yeah. All of it here in Austin, Texas? Uh, Houston. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. We know Houston very well. That's where you live? Yeah. And that's yeah, yeah, where that's you work? Uh, I just quit my job like a month ago. Oh, cool. What job yeah. was that? Uh, I was working at a gym. I was working at Blink Fitness. What fitness? Blink fitness. Blink? Yeah. Blink? Yeah. B-L-I-N-K? Uh -huh. That's a thing? There's like four in Houston probably. It's good. Yeah. Mm, who worked? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's cheap as fuck. It's cheap as fuck. What are you talking yeah, about? That was the only gym I, I, I ever went to. So. <laughs> in, Bur in Burbank, yeah. You went to that gym? Yeah, and it's like 15 bucks a month or something like that. It's brand new. It's awesome. You, I was in. I was only in there a blink of a time. Or, you know, I was like, I was like, signed up, canceled. What? <laughs> he signed up. He's like, I'm exhausted. I gotta get out of here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the before and the before. <laughs> blink fitness. That doesn't yeah. even sound real. That is amazing to me. How long did you work there? Uh, long time, dude. Probably like a month. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> sounds about right. What did you do there? I just told people hi. Ah. Just hello, welcome in. You're that a was greeter. It, dude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, what's your plan? Did you save a lot of money? No, nah, dude. I was getting like two hundred dollars every two weeks, so I couldn't buy shit. Just right. pay my phone bill, and that's about it. Right. Right. Okay. Do you live by yourself? No, nah, I live with my parents. Okay. How yeah. old are you? 27. 27 years old. <laughs> <laughs> that got him. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. But you're Latino, so that's good for another 30 years or so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm all right. As long as I cut the grass at home, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. Lord knows you guys are fighting for that job. Uh, <laughs> no, I want to. <laughs> all right. So you're cutting the grass at home. Earning your keep. Mom's cooking is good? Yeah, very good. You ever hear your mom and your dad hook up still? <laughs> Tell the truth. The, the house echoes. Like, <laughs> so, yeah, I just turn up the music a little bit. Yeah, but it all sounds the same. Just, I know it's a good Mexican joke if Michael Gonzalez is laughing, so I'm doing good. I'm doing good. All right. Danny, that was an amazing performance. How, many, yeah. how often do you perform? Uh, pretty often. I mean, I'm, you know, I don't have a job, so I just go out every night pretty much. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Funny good segues, jokes. funny setups, funny the good, whole way through. Good presence. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great Even presence. without the wolf. Yeah. Sure. What, what is that? He a wolf? Still, he would still have presence. You got a wolf, and then under your undershirt's another wolf, or what's going on underneath? No, oh, blood okay. in, blood out, dude. Oh, That's okay. My toy <laughs> All right. You, you wear a lot of wolf clothing. Yeah, I sleep in a wolf blanket. Really? Uh, wow. Does it scare your mom when she tucks you in at night? <laughs> 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 That's my favorite part of the day, honestly. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Danny Guerrero. What's something that we would be surprised to know about you? Any special skills or talents other than being a, a very funny comedian? Man, uh, I just do jujitsu, and that's about it. Uh, oh shit. Damn. What are you, a brown belt? Purple. <laughs> Purple? Yeah. Oh my goodness. That's good, right? Yeah. We have just a couple few levels left, right? Blue. Yeah, yeah, but I haven't been going that much, so okay. might take a while. All right. Yeah. Okay. Why haven't you been going? Probably just staying out and like 
drinking at shows and stuff. So how often do you do jujitsu? Uh, probably like twice a week, maybe. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, let yeah. me ask you a question that we've all been wondering since the beginning of the episode. Does the guy on the bottom wear a condom? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> all right. Other than jujitsu, what's your love life like? Anything going on there? You seem like a really good-looking, charismatic guy other than your clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's cool. I've been with this girl for a while, like probably about to be maybe three years pretty oh, soon. Wow. Yeah. Oh my you ever get her under the wolf blanket? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> really? That's the only move I have. Your parents let you do that? Yeah. Okay. When they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> they just turn as... up the they just turn yeah, up the music. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's it. This guy just cuts yeah. grass and eats ass. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like a wolf, baby. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. My goodness. You're you've been with the same girl for three years. What does she do? Uh, she's a hip hop dancer, so Get she like the choreographs. Fuck and, out of here! Yeah. Wow, that is so cool. Did you bring her along tonight? No, 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 okay. no. She's back home dancing. I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, How do you get paid as a hip hop dancer? Good I, question. I don't know. I don't really ask how her day usually goes. Oh. We all just found out that she's a stripper, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Danny is the last person to find out that his girl's a stripper. I don't know, Tom. She just comes back with fucking $381 bills every time. Half of them are roses. <laughs> Invite this young man to the Thursday show, will you? Yeah, please? I would love to have you open up the secret show if wow. you're in town. If you're in you town. here, on, you gonna be here Thursday? Oh Take one of those. Danny Guerrero, welcome. Oh Come back. That's the Kill Tony debut of Danny Guerrero. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have another special treat for you. Another one of the elite regulars of Kill Tony. This guy has been smashing on this show for years. He gets a little bit fucking better, a little bit stronger every week. A monster. Ladies and gentlemen, roast genius comedy lord, David Lucas. Yeah. Uh, white women think it's fuck now, man. That shit crazy. Uh, they got ass and titties. I'm glad y'all weren't built like that in the fifties, or or that would have been way more Emmett Till's. <laughs> Every nigga would have went to and got hung for whistling at a white woman. Like, <laughs> Look at all that ass on that bitch, god damn. <laughs> I'm tired of white girls being woke, pretending that they're black. Uh, I went to this BLM march and I was the only nigga there. Uh, <laughs> it was a whole bunch of white girls saying, they feel my pain. It's, it's like, bitch, really? Do you know what it feels like to go in the store and have somebody follow you thinking that you're stealing? <laughs> oh, yeah, you do. If that was the case, you wouldn't have called the cops when I followed your ass home. <laughs> All right, thank you, man. That's my time. David Lights Out Lucas. Wow. Yeah. Did it again. Yeah. Absolutely. Up, Tony? Absolutely. Hey, all your facial hair on top of that nigga head. Oh, don't make... How do you make fun of both of us at the same time like that? That is not nice. You need to take that... You need to take that motherfucking Bosnia hair yarmulke he got and put it on your chin. Oh, my God. You son of a bitch. I don't know if you know this guy. This is Tom Papa, and this is Tom Popeyes. <laughs> you son of a bitch. This is a chicken-heavy episode. Speaking of chicken-heavy, David Lucas is here. <laughs> Of course I know Tom Papa. He take the yeast out of your pussy and make bread. (laughs) (laughs) 
You haven't lived until you've tried our pussy loaf. <laughs> <laughs> that one hurt because it was the first one I understood what he was saying. <laughs> Man, if you don't shut your Quentin Tarantino head ass up, <laughs> that nigga got nigga in his head 75 times right now. <laughs> David Lucas coming in, rocking the camo. <laughs> you look like the woods right now. <laughs> I saw Danny Guerrero try to find his lawnmower back there a second ago when he saw you. Tony, you look like a gay ninja. Shut the fuck up, boy. You will catch a ninja star with your booty cheeks, nigga. <laughs> 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 That motherfucker ass like a pin cushion. Nigga, you just. <laughs> what else, man? This nigga with a football helmet on want to say something. Oh, you stop it. Uh, he does this to everybody, Tom. I'm sorry. Look at that motherfucker. That motherfucker look like Rain Man. No, Boy, you, you just... stop it. David, you stop it. You're not allowed to make fun of the guests unless they make fun of you. That motherfucker draw you a map he ain't never seen before. <laughs> what is that even? What is that even? <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but it's hilarious. <laughs> <Don't either. laughs> Look at it, boy looking like he old trial for touching kids. <laughs> oh, come on. You stop it. You stop it. I know that nigga was on the Jeffrey Epstein flight. Okay, <laughs> all right. You stop. Right now. <laughs> is she 16 or 15? Okay, David. <laughs> David, this is our guest. You can't do this to our guest. That motherfucker got a Martha Stewart sweater on. Oh, Boy, my God. <laughs> that motherfucker got his arms divorced like he going through a divorce hearing. You stop it. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to book Seinfeld if you keep doing he this. He can't even say that. What? He looks like he just seen a nigga sneak in his house. <laughs> Still don't understand a word he's saying. <laughs> Well, maybe you should put them thick-ass glasses on your ears. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you better stop it. Hey, put them glasses to the light. Let me see you burn a hole through that table. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a battle of thick glasses uh, and thick asses live dude. on Hill Tony. This is absolutely incredible. That's, David that's, Lucas. That's the sweater you get when you bake 100 loaves of bread. Okay. <laughs> David. That motherfucker got an oven that's milk built in. This is what happens that's with... The, that's the stomach you get when you eat 100 loaves of bread. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> you had that if shit you don't get your, If you don't get your Quasimodo looking ass... All right, here, David. Look at this motherfucker, boy. You look like you collect vintage David. Beatles, nigga. Your ass. <laughs> Jesus, fuck, will you stop? What is wrong with you? He got a garage. I swear to God, David, what the fuck is wrong with you? I this feel like I'm at, I feel like I'm at the zoo being attacked by a giant sea lion. <laughs> Just, you look like you'll get put out of the zoo get, for fondling can. kangaroos, nigga. <laughs> is this a male or a female? Hold up, I'll tell you. He's a sea lion, all right. You can you can see him lying every time he's at a doctor's appointment. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I don't eat before bed anymore. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we know you lie because you check mail on the application, nigga, when you go to the doctor. <laughs> you Sir, are, you have a pussy. How are you a man? You are on fire. What do you think is going on with you? Did you, you eat a specific... What happened before? What did you do before this? You come in guns a blazing. Uh, I ain't gonna tell you because all you gonna do is make a joke. Well, I, you're goddamn right. <laughs> uh, I went to the gym before Kill Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I got By the looks of things, I'm guessing it was Blink Gym. <laughs> <laughs> you and Red Band over here. We got Red Band, we got Black Band, <laughs> and got Gay all. Man. <laughs> Get your ass out of here, boy. Oh, he's so funny roasting, I forgot all about his set. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Are you talking you about You bake bread, nigga. You can't say shit. No, that is not Don't make true. me a cinnamon roll, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, my God, David. You are out of control. I've never seen him like this before. I swear to God, Tom brought me a loaf of bread, and I saw David. And then you sat on it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put some peanut butter on this. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. I'm fucking around, man. I'm fucking around. David, unbelievable. I'm convinced that him giving me a loaf of bread and you getting none made you mad tonight. 
That is the only thing that I can put this to. <laughs> the fuck are you? How to bake bread? What are you googling yeah, right I'm a, now? I'm gonna bake some bread tonight. Uh, oh, oh my Who's goodness! That? All right, David, yeah. another unbelievable performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just an absolute fucking wrecking ball. Yeah. What's going on? Anything you want to plug or anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, February 24th and 25th, I'm in Detroit at the House of Comedy. Pull up on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Detroit, Michigan. Yeah, thank you. There he goes, David Lucas, everybody. Unbelievable. <laughs> Comes in fucking... <laughs> That was great. One more time for David Lucas, everybody. He was amped. Okay. This looks like a very interesting name. Make some noise for Beaster McGillicuddy. All right. Wow, here she is, everybody. Beaster McGillicuddy. Try saying that name in bed, huh? Anyways, um, <laughs> nothing gives you a boner like having the name of a small orphan boy, right? <laughs> um, recently, every guy on a dating app tells me that I look like a crystal girl. Um, they never really specify what type of crystal. <laughs> we talking rose quartz or street rock, dude? There's only a small difference, you know? Um, the men I date are usually really disappointed when they find out that I do have a relationship with my father. They're like, damn, this bitch just doesn't fuck. <laughs> right. Um, my friends keep telling me that I'm starting to sound like an ableist. Uh, not really sure how I can sound like an ableist if I don't even know what the fuck that means. <laughs> Fucking retards. <laughs> It's been hard doing stand-up comedian as a woman. Um, you hand a white lady a microphone and people flee like cockroaches when you turn the lights on. I swear I'm not here to explain the proper use of pronouns, right? <laughs> Ma'am, sir, get the fuck out of here. Beaster McGillicuddy. Welcome, Beaster. Hello. Thank you, thank you. How's it going? It's good, yeah. How long have you been doing stand-up for? Um, Loosely, two years or so. All right, enough about your pussy. Uh, <laughs> two it's like years? a wizard sleeve, you know? There you go. Yeah. So two years? Yeah. Where at? Um, Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, I just moved here about four months ago. Okay, what made you move to Austin, Texas? Um, just wanted a change. Uh -huh. Yeah. Get okay. out of Phoenix. So what made you pick Austin and not L.A. or New York or something like that? I wanted to do a little more of edgy comedy. Right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, so how's that been going for you? It's been going okay. Um, I just only recently got a morning job, so I've been able to do more comedy. What's the morning job? I'm a barista. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. The few, the proud. Fucking up Americanos All every right. day. Okay. Yep. And you like it? It, yeah, it's Is okay. that what you were doing in Phoenix? No, I was bartending. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of a downgrade. Yeah. <laughs> but at least you have nights free. Yes. Okay. So you've been doing a lot of mics and things like that? Yeah. How's that going for you? It's going good. You get, yeah. You get hit on by a lot of uh, male comedians at these I things? I can't make any friends with male comedians. They all want to fuck me. That's right. That's yeah. right. You are an open mic eight. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nothing but trouble. It doesn't get much higher than an eight at an open mic, by the way. So she's basically an open mic ten. <laughs> On the streets, she's a six. But at the open mic, no, I'm kidding, Beaster. Can I call you? Is that your real name, Beaster? That's my childhood name. I've been called that my entire life. Okay. Yeah. Everybody calls you Beaster. And yeah. All right. How did that start? Um, I come from a family of comedians, and my dad just picked the most ridiculous name in the world uh -huh. and it just kind of stuck I'm not sure was he a real comedian he owned a comedy club so oh, a wannabe oh. what comedy club uh, it was called Anderson's Fifth Estate and ended up getting bought out by the Laugh Factory okay and that's yeah. in Phoenix it was in Scottsdale oh. he doesn't own it anymore very cool how long did he own it for 30 years wow yeah. that's incredible so yeah. your family really is a bunch of comedians yeah and did other people in your family do it yeah all my brothers 
Wow. Yep. Are they all still doing it? No, they have regular jobs. Ah, uh, <laughs> the old curse of the McGinnicott. Yep. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Incredible. It yeah. ain't easy out here on these streets. It takes uh, a yeah, special yeah. kind of fucked up person. <laughs> um, so here you are mm-hmm. trying it. Are your brothers older than you? Yeah. How long did they do it for each, if you had to guess? Ballpark. Um, probably two, three years well, or so. Well, you're right on schedule then, mm-hmm. aren't you? Basically? Ready to quit. <laughs> Ready to go back to school. Okay. <laughs> and what have you been doing for fun here in Austin, Texas? I've um, been going out, getting hammered, um, going to um, <laughs> the park and hiking and... The park, hiking. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I don't really know a lot of people, so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Very fun. So you go out by yourself a lot. To Mike's, yes. <laughs> right. How about the other things? To the bars, I go out with my one friend. You have one friend. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you knew this person. You met him here. Mm-hmm. Okay. We matched with the same guy on Tinder. Oh. Yeah, and he's he's a dude. He's a dude. Yeah. The friend is a dude. The friend is a dude. Bisexual dude. He's a gay man. He's completely gay. Yeah. Gotcha. Doesn't make any That's sense. That's what he's telling you, at least. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he's gay. Yeah. You think he's gay? I do think he's gay. Positive? Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. The old Keister McGillicuddy, yeah. if you will. <laughs> All right. Um, Beaster, what do you think is the most interesting thing about you? If you could span your entire life, perhaps a special skill or a talent or something like that, other than stand-up comedy? Is there something else that you're really good at? Maybe you once got a trophy for, or some a hobby that you do, or something like that? Perhaps? Um, not necessarily known for anything super specific. I'm, I can you do... Want- Voices. Oh, good. what kind yeah. of voices can you do? Uh, some Family Guy voices. All right, let's hear some yeah. Family Guy voices. Shut um, up, let's hear Yeah, this. so peop- everyone on TikTok tells me that I look like Lois Griffin. So. You do, I can see that. Yeah. You do. You have the cheeks. So the high I do, che- the cheeks and the, the massive nose, the side profile. Okay. All right. yeah, I, so. wasn't gonna, I wasn't going to say that part, but you said it. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> Oh, Pena. That's really good. That's really good. That's really good. I can good. do a pretty good Herbert the Pervert, too. The old guy. Okay. Yeah, the whistle. <clears throat> hey, Chris. Mmm, Chris. You want some popsicles? <laughs> wow. That is uncanny. Yeah, should have yeah. opened with that. Yeah. I know, I chose the wrong set. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, is there anything else? You have, you have any non-family guy people, or is it just straight up? Um, I could do Elmo. Okay, let's hear Elmo. Tickle me Elmo! Wow. Elmo's loud! Wow, that is incredible. You have a real gift. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Beaster, well, um... Anything else for Beast or Tom Papa? What do you think about this? The first female comedian of the night. She gave it a shot. Two years in the game. Yeah. Four I've months never... in Austin. Yeah, I think you're funny. I think you just got a little nervous. You probably should have opened with the voice thing. Uh huh. Made them comfortable. You seemed a little. You seem like a funny person. But Thank you. Yeah, I was like... very nervous. This is yeah. my fifth time signing up. I did not think I was going to get called. Were you outside? Did you have to? No, I was. I was right here at the right bar, there. like a real normal person. Getting not nervous. <laughs> not in the bins. How much do you drink on average? <laughs> um, <laughs> like the day or what? anything. Any, any, any of it. Are you drunk right now? No, I've no. had one drink tonight. What was the drink? Uh, Irish Jameson whiskey. and ginger ale. There it is, Jameson. Ouch. With a last name like McGillicuddy, there really isn't, <laughs> there aren't many options. It's right, pretty much, right. Yeah. Um, I don't know, maybe two, three nights a week, I'll go out. Oh, okay, that's not that bad uh, yeah. at all. Yeah, I'm not an alcoholic, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> a- any cool uh, comedy stories from any comedians that, that, that went to your dad's club? That yeah, you, uh, Is there actually, something that what sticks out? Or? Yeah, so David Spade actually started at my dad's club when he was in college at Scottsdale Community College. Oh, that's oh. that place. Yeah. I read about that because I was always wondering where the fuck David Spade did stand-up comedy. Exactly. I'm yeah. not even kidding. I'm dead <laughs> right? serious. Like, I literally read about your dad's place. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is that? 
that place? Exactly. I'm like, I know every comedy (laughs) club in Arizona, and I've never heard of this place. Yeah, my dad said that he gave him time, because every time he came in, he brought about 10 or so women. And uh, that sounds about right. He brought in the bitches. He's David Spade, but he ain't neutered, if you know what I mean. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Beaster McGillicuddy, fun times. Here's a little joke book. Get the party started for you. Beaster McGillicuddy, her Kill Tony debut. Nah, I got it. A record setting amount of signups. We're going to try to get through it. See what we got here. Make some noise for Jacoby Warlick, everybody. Jacoby Warlick. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Sesame Street? Here he is, everyone. Make some noise for Jacoby Orlick. These people wait all night for this moment. Give them a round of applause, Jacoby. Well, I've only lived in Austin for a couple years. You end up fucking too many girls with long armpit hairs, goddamn bull ring. You end up waking look up you end up waking up looking like this. I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> Got this shirt at a, uh, at a Bucky's. <laughs> it was Pride Month. <laughs> but, no, I work at bars around here. You know, a couple bars around town. And uh, it was Christmas Day. I was hanging out, got off work. Regular, he's a little guy. Joined him. He has to pee a bunch. The beers in his hands. They're real big. But uh, he got back from the fucking bathroom. And he, uh, he fucking came back, sat back down. And the girl next to us said, Oh, were you busy during the Christmas season? I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> he said, he was like, yeah. He played it off. And then the next time, he came back down. I was like, did she really fucking say that to you? I was like, she was like, yeah. I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. I was like, that's fucking quite rude. Wow, Jacoby Warlick coming in. A lot of setup. A lot of setup, no payoff. I guess so. Well, he worked at the mall. He worked at the Apple store. Yep. I know. All right. (laughs) Okay. Who did? I I, I botched. I guess the guy in the joke or something <laughs> like that. I'm not exactly sure. Oh, wow, boy, at wrong. You have a very calming voice. You're like Hank Hillbilly. <laughs> Appreciate that. You look like a guy that would <laughs> rape Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, get in my car. <laughs> I mean truck. I'm sorry. It's a truck. I love it. Jacoby, you seem like a true Texan. Where are you from? Arkansas, actually. Where? Arkansas. Arkansas. Hell yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of Texas. Very good. <laughs> uh, it's uh, it's East uh, East Texas. I love it. I love it. And uh, you live here now? Yeah, I do. How long have you lived here? Oh, well, just a couple years. I mean, making my way down to from Seattle. You sound like a country singer in between songs. <laughs> Well, you know, here's well. a little something else coming up. Wrote this one about a couple weeks ago. I think you're going to like it. I know I like playing it, so I hope you'll uh, join along. And, uh, you know, I moved here just about uh, three months ago now, and uh, this one's for you. D- uh, if you are in the mood to dance, perhaps you can grab a lovely lady and, and have a dance if you'd like to. Uh, but, I mean, at this point, we just have a few songs left in the set, so I hope you enjoy it. I've been playing with these boys for a long time now, and, uh, you know, I figure we'll do the dance, and uh, we'll, well get it done. You know what I mean? Just oh. some tequila, son. <laughs> come on, come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Jacoby. Jacoby, getting me to use some of my fucking local music references. <laughs> yeah. right. Hey, yeah. I've seen I've seen Tony at the White Horse. You have? Yeah, you yeah. seen me at the what? At the White Horse. Oh yeah. You're, You're wearing those little right. little plaid pants? You're goddamn right. I fit in well over there. I know, I know. He he was there with a fucking hot woman. Okay, now. Jacoby, will you fucking relax? <laughs> Jesus Christ. What the hell is wrong with you, bro? <laughs> this fucking guy. What's wrong with this guy? Saw him, uh, saw him finger banging a ten. Uh, <laughs> but here's another one right down the barrel. We wrote this one last week. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Neon moon. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to do. Uh, okay. Do you play music? No, I thought this was a karaoke sign-up, actually. Right, okay. Very good, Jacoby. I love it. <laughs> How long have you been doing stand-up comedy? That's a... Uh, no, no, I've just been funny as fuck all my life. I mean, uh, I, I watch you a lot. Okay. I, I just want to meet my hero. They tell you not to meet heroes. You fucking shouldn't. Oh, okay, very good. <laughs> Jacoby, maybe you're forgetting you're the one bombing up here tonight. <laughs> I've been smashing for exactly an hour, so. No, he's fucking saving me right now. Thank God. <laughs> All right. Jacoby. That karaoke joke was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was good. Do you know how to sing? Uh, no, no. Actually, I, I've been nervous as fuck all day long. I've taken three nervous poops. I fucking called my old man. I, I was like, I fucking signed up for, for Kill Tony. Yeah. He was like, just imagine all your friends naked. I'm, I said, they usually fucking are. Is that true? Your friends are naked often? I mean, goddamn, hang out with a lot of women. You hang out with what? What? A lot of women. You do? Yeah. You, you're a womanizer. No, they, none of them like me. So you just... So, <laughs> <laughs> even... <laughs> Team Madness knows a little bitch when he sees one. You know what I mean? Thank you, thank you. Or when, or when he hears one or smells one or something like that. Something like that. He knows it's around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Jacoby, give us one little fun fact about your life that we would find interesting. You know this show. You've listened to it. You've heard interviews. You've said to yourself, God damn, I would do better than that. We found out so far you haven't. But now is one of those chances. You're in it right all now. Right, this all is right. the moment where we all were going right. to find out what makes Jacoby Warlick different than everybody else that's ever been on this show. I wouldn't talk about myself. I'd talk about my hat. I, uh, I was at Sagebrush. You guys know the place down on South Congress. Okay. I was, I was out there seeing some music. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, some girl was selling fucking clothes and hats and stuff. And she's selling this Garth Brooks hat. And I was like, I have to have this fucking hat. She sold it to me, and then my mom actually sent me, sent me this fucking uh, article about this woman that got arrested for stabbing her boyfriend 36 times, blamed it on a big black man, and that was the fucking woman that sold me the hat at Sagebrush. The woman they, that I sold... Feel, yeah. I feel like I'm listening to a sleep app. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Well, I'm serious. You can make a lot of money. Hey, knocking people out. Hey, rain sounds in my voice. Wow. I'll tell you what. So the lady that sold you a hat did what? She fucking killed her boyfriend in L.A. Like three years after I was born, she fucking stabbed him 36 times. Sold did me that goddamn Garth Brooks hat. She's, that's the hat that she sold you? No, no, a different hat. Okay. <laughs> I went, okay. This is a dark sleep app. It really is. Hey, I'm going to have nightmares. <laughs> it's, it's me and Ron White putting you all to sleep. We're going we're gonna to no, have a No, no. <laughs> do not clump yourself with the king Ron White, <laughs> Jacoby. You sound nothing like Ron. He's got a fucking right. little bit of... <laughs> he's got some push to his ears. He, like a, he does. God he does. damn, you know, I got one last thing to play for y'all. I know that, <laughs> I know. I said I only had one what? more song, but uh, <laughs> I just appreciate y'all Come for on, me coming and out tonight. Me and, you. and uh, you know, I'm very grateful that, you know, I can hey, play yes, here that's in my time. musical city. Jacoby, I decide when it's your fucking time. You stand there and you take the impression that I'm doing of you. I'm gonna go get a shot from the bar. Stepping on my fucking lines. No, you're not gonna have it. I'm gonna have them stop serving you if you fucking. Uh, no. no. What do you want to drink? You name it. What's that? What do you want to drink? Ooh, uh, Jim Beam pickleback. Damn. God damn! I didn't know they had gay guys in Arkansas. But, uh, <laughs> I do believe you like a pickle on your backside. So there he goes. Buy this man. I got this man a uh, fucking whiskey pickleback. Whatever he wants. Get him out of here. Jacoby Warlick, everybody. There you go. Now you can hey, leave. You now you can go. There he goes. Jacoby Warlick. You guys think we should do one more bucket pull, huh? A record-setting amount of people. Let's see what we got here. You want to pick one, Tom? 
let's see what happens. My here. pleasure. Let's see if Tom has better luck. Kurt Wills or Willie? Kurt Willie. Kurt Willie. Oh my goodness. Free that looks like a new Willie. name to me. Kurt, Kurt Willie. Willie the comic. At Free Willie Comic. They all have bad handwriting, these new comedians. <laughs> yeah. You can tell the ones that started after phones were invented because their handwriting is dog shit. How about a hand for local artist Chris Rogers drawing Michael Lair over there? The late, great Michael Lair, who we lost this week. How loud can this place get for Michael Lair, huh? He's listening. He's listening. Hell yeah. I like that. Standing O for Michael fucking Lair. We got any movement? Wow. Still it appears as time for Fat Willie to get to the stage. <laughs> it appears as though, much like Michael Lair, Kurt Willie is no longer with us. Uh, <laughs> I'm pulling another name out of the bucket. We're going to get someone else up here. Make some noise for Danny Martinello, everybody. Danny Martinello. Here he is, everybody. What appears to be what very well could be your final bucket bowl tonight. One more time for Danny Martinello, everyone. What's going on, Austin? You guys good or what? Sick, no. Uh, this is my first time here. I like Austin, but like everybody thinks I'm on drugs because apparently I don't blink enough for you guys. I don't. They say, they don't. They're like, yo, you haven't blinked for a while. What are you on? I'm like, I don't know. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Like, what do you mean, right? And then, uh, but like, I feel like I don't need to blink though. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel the need because the the only reason you blink is to like refresh your eyes and like mine just stay fresh. You know what I'm saying, right? Though I, but I'd rather people think I'm on drugs for not blinking than like blinking and think I need drugs. If that makes sense. Because like this says like something's going on, but like this says something needs to be dealt with. <laughs> you know? And, th and they say, yo, the lights are on, but nobody's home. But with me, you know, there's a fucking dinner party going on in there, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. my, my brother's about to have a kid and he's worried, right? Because he's like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to get. What happens if it's transgender, right? And I'm like, well, you're going to love it regardless. You know what I mean? It's your kid. And then he says, what, what would you do? You know what I mean? Like, what would bug you? And I was like, fuck, if my kid was allergic to peanuts, that would really ruin my day. <laughs> you know? Because I just think it's funny that a, a nut brings a kid into the world, but now a nut takes them out. You know? Yeah. Danny Martinello. Very good. Welcome, Danny. First time on the show? Yeah, first time. Welcome. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, 13 years, come Feb. 13 wow. years? Yeah. Where at? Uh, uh, in Canada. Oh, yeah. look at you. The old Canadian Wahlberg over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Interesting. What part of Canada? I'm originally from Edmonton, but I do my time in Toronto now. All right. You're there in the big nice. city of Toronto. Yeah, now. yeah, dude. Hell yeah. So what are you at, like eight vaccinations right now? No, 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 no. I just I, plug I just into a little IV <laughs> drip when you go to sleep at Yeah, night? no, I just got my six, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I, I got two because I had to. Right. Yeah. I know, I know. Have you, any side effects or anything? Uh, no, not really. When you say not really, <laughs> like I, kn I would know what no side effects is. What does not really mean? A numb Well, sometimes like I have heart palpitations, but I don't know if it's just because life or no, like no, no, what? No, 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 no. Hey, let me ask you this. <laughs> let me ask you. I'm just curious. I don't usually talk about it. And I know fucking 40% of the internet's just furious right now because they had to get vaccinated to be a fucking mailman or whatever the fuck. Yeah. But... I'm always so interested in it, and I know Canadians got the fucking, the real test one, you know what I mean? Yeah. Did you have heart palpitations before the vaccine? See, that's the thing I don't even really know, dude. You did. <laughs> yeah. You did, by the way. If, you're no. one, if, you, if, you, if you don't <laughs> no, know, like, the answer like, is no. No, I, you I don't know. You notice when your heart goes, dip, 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 yeah. dip, dip, right? But you notice it happens now. Yeah. Okay. That's all. <laughs> I don't really have a dog in the fight. Save me! Save me! 
Take me. Take me. Step back. Okay, step sorry. Back. I'm sorry. You can't. You're not in Canada. You can't just play along with Texans like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are straight up, though, dude. I don't even we, feel like this is Texas, we man. We lock up phones, but the guns are out, my friend. Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't seen one since, and I'm kind of disappointed because I'm from Alberta, so I was really hoping someone had an open carry, but like, you guys are kind of letting me down. Relax, Danny. <laughs> okay. Relax. Danny, just relax a little bit. <laughs> okay, so you've been doing it 13 years, yeah. all up in Canada. Yeah. What do you do for a living? Stand up. Are and you like on the Yuck Yuck steel? Do they? Sign I do Yuck Yucks. I just okay. taped an album with JFL. I do, did some CBC stuff, and then uh, I played. CBC, the, the Center of Disease Control. <laughs> yeah, C, C, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what happens. They yeah, do. yeah. I got a nice opening spot for the World Economic Forum tomorrow, so that's pretty sweet. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Uh, so um, you just do stand up, and that's going good for you. Yeah, it's been pretty sick. I'm trying to get my visa and shit, so it's been nice. Canada has some weird things. You know, there was a, a, a lawsuit. <laughs> against a comedian, right? You know about this? Yeah, they don't really let you say what you want. Right. That's, yeah. a, that's a pretty big deal. An entire country that doesn't let you say what you want. Now you're here in Texas, which literally completely invites crazy shit. Yeah. I mean... It's pretty cool. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to move to the States? Uh, yeah, uh, eventually. I don't know. I'd like to work here. I just love my country. You know what I mean? Like, I like having, like, healthcare and shit and enjoying life and, like, yeah. Stuff, yeah. So. You should come to America, get a job, and you can pay for healthcare. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Instead of waiting in line for eight hours like a fucking no. goots. No, it's okay. I actually went to go apply for my uh, my social security number and shit. So I got like a visa. So it's it's going. It's a slow process, That's but shit, good. we're doing it. I you know? love it. I love it. Let me ask you this. Yeah, Dave. what's up? I'm interested in this. <laughs> um, can you give us an example of a joke that you wrote in Canada, but you couldn't do in Canada? Can you sort of like give us an example? 13 years in the game, I'd imagine there's one that you had to change a little bit, right? Tweak a little bit, but you wanted to say it a different way? Yeah, like I got in kind of in trouble because like uh, there's a, like, I don't know, like we got like this huge like, uh, it was kind of a battle for like gender neutral bathrooms and shit. And then... Uh, but I, I like I did this one joke where uh, I saw this guy that was really upset for being like in the lineup and like having girls go to the washroom and like I kind of asked him what's up and then uh, he was like oh I don't like know why girls are using the washroom and we are I'm like well it's the same thing you know what I mean like we're just going piss and he said yeah but what happens if you got to piss and someone shows you up and I was like uh, it's a completely separate sport though you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah. they're sitting down we're standing up and shit but then I, was, I laughed because the mental image of a woman showing me up in the washroom came in. And, like, the only way you girls could show me up is if I'm cute in line going to the urinal, but then all of a sudden you came in, hit check me all the way, grabbed me by the back of the collar, threw me out of the way of the urinal, walked up, hiked your skirt to the side, threw a thumb over it like a garden hose, and just fucking hit the back of the porcelain. Like a good power piss, cast raise, glutes engaged, shooting a golden arch, right? Just feed me that quarter pounder, Brittany. No cheese, you know? All while she's finishing a tall boy, though, right? So she's guzzling it, guzzling it, guzzling it. Crushes it on her forehead, aces into the bin, looks at me and goes, get fucked. And then walks out. And th My friend, that is exactly why I asked that question. Thanks, dude. I was really open. I'm like, 13 years, I bet this guy's got something in the fucking chamber right now. Yeah, we got a couple combos, you know okay. what I'm saying? Okay, Danny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I worked with you actually, Red Band, at the Corner Comedy Club, I and I worked with you, I worked with you at the uh, Rivoli. You, you came down Rivoli. with Joe, right? Yeah, man. I hosted your week. How long are you guys in town for? Uh, Joe, I don't know, Joe. When we, I'm leaving. I don't know when the fuck I want to leave, but like, uh, you I'm, in town spo I'm supposed to. Yeah, I'm, I could be. Yeah, I'm in town Thursday. Could fuck be. It. You're gonna change a flight from Canada? Yeah, whatever, man. Chasing that. I would American love to have dream. you on the secret show wow. if you're in town. Yeah, look at that. And you get to take one of these bad mamma jammas. Yeah, with hook you me too. up with this one of those leather bags. Bones eye, custom made. Uh, Thanks, Tony. And I know you're not allowed these in Canada, but that's a gel blaster right there. Oh, yeah. Give me a gel you blaster. Got a big one coming. I'm at, I actually got like seven firearms, so I'm all good. I'll grab that, though, too. I love it. <laughs> I love it. They call hockey sticks firearms in Canada. It's very cute, it's very adorable. It's very sweet. Guys, make some noise for Danny Martinello, everybody. Come on. All the way from Canada, 13 years in the fucking game. That's nice. what I'm talking about. Nice. A 13-year-old, a 13-year veteran, a fucking 
people that have been doing it a couple months. We've had all shapes and sizes on tonight's episode. <clears throat> what do we see? We started a little bit late, right? We started a little bit late. Yoni, did we start a little bit late? You guys think we should do one more? We have to. It never works, but we do it anyway. <laughs> Your final bucket pull of the night goes by the name of Michael Ridley, everybody. Michael Ridley. What's good, dude? <laughs> Papa, hold these, baby. <laughs> so, guys, I know, I know what you're thinking, man. My hair is not sewn into my hat. I promise, dude. This isn't a wig sewn into a hat. All right. I got my hair cut from a Mexican in Pflugerville, and now I look like a Mongolian warlord. <laughs> yeah. My name is Michael Ridley, and I'm a comedian. It only makes sense because my parents are comedians, my dad is Theo Vaughn, and my mom is Bobby Lee. <laughs> I recently joined a fraternity for uncircumcised men. It's called Alpha Sigma Schmegma, dude. <laughs> it's a tight-knit brotherhood, heavy emphasis on the hood. We go to intactivist rallies. We go to intactivist rallies and DMX is playing in the background. Where the hood, where the hood, where the hood at? Thank you. Wow, Michael Ridley. Now, right as I was just saying, we've had all different shapes and sizes and years. This is my favorite type of thing that happens on the show where someone who's done okay before or kind of good before all of a sudden really does good and we get to see their growth. You've been on the show two or three times before, right? Twice. Twice before. I remember you because of your face. <laughs> <laughs> so, Michael Ridley, a fucking fantastic set. Tell us about it. How, uh, how hard have you been working? What's been going on? What's your regimen been? Because that's much better than we've ever seen before. You would agree, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, for the last, in the last week, I've been on stage 10 times. Nice. I moved here two months ago, and I was kind of struggling trying to figure out where the stages are and where the mics are. And uh, I've just been putting in the work and getting booked on showcases from other local comics and really just dialing it in. That's beautiful. Nice. That is exactly the correct answer. Incredible. I'd imagine getting around to 10 mics is uh, pretty rough. What are you driving, Michael Ridley? Uh, I used to drive a Miata. Uh-huh. I, I used to have three Miatas. I sold all three of them to move here. Three Miatas? Yeah, I had three Miatas. This is like Mr. Miata meets Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was gay as fuck, cubed. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yeah. All right. Michael Ridley. So let's talk about what else is going on. Uh, dude, I, I got, well, Red Band said that I was moving here the last episode I was, uh -huh. like, I was in, but I didn't let anyone at my previous job know. So, so when they checked it out, everybody knew that I was moving to Texas. I had it under wraps and Red Band. What was Band. the previous job? Uh, I recently got it back. I quit. I was a purchaser at a body shop. So you crash your car. I get the list. I make the phone calls to the dealerships. I make the money that way. Wow. Normally, it's your people crashing the car. Look at that. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Or, or, you know, making them go sideways, Tony, with complete control. So, I, I mean... <laughs> See... <laughs> drifting. Drifting. Tony. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh, a drifting yes. joke. I, <laughs> me and Tom <laughs> went right over our heads. The whole drifting That's joke. Honest. I believe earlier you said you li uh, your girlfriend didn't want to move here. Did your girl girlfriend move with you or did you drop her? Okay, no, I did not leave my wife. Uh, oh, it's your wife. <laughs> it's a wife. Yeah, I'm married to a white woman. It's a major oh, flex. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. You better you better yes. love her long time. You I, know? Do. Uh, I do. I <laughs> do. I do love her. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for that one. <laughs> okay, Red Band. Red Band. That was Red Band. That was Red Band. You hear me, Internet? So go after him. Okay, stop that. Turn that off. Where the fuck did you get that sound effect from? 
That is unacceptable behavior. Yeah, that was my mom, dude. What the oh, fuck? Oh, shit. Bobby Lee. Okay. Um, I love it, Michael. So where were we just, where were we? You were asking him if he's really uncircumcised. Is that true? Yeah, dude, I got a convertible top. Yeah, dude. Wow. Okay. Yeah, son, I got, it's, uh, dude, you lose 20,000 nerve endings when you get circumcised, guys. Uh, yes, it's true. It's true. I don't I, know. I, I think we're doing just fine without those 20,000. Uh, <laughs> are, are yeah, are you coming too slow? Like, yeah. what the fuck? No, yeah. you remember like those like infinite toy, like the infinite tube toys that you had in the 90s? That's what my dick is like. It's just jerking off infinite, dude. It's pretty dope. No one knows what you're referencing there. <laughs> Red Band knows. What, what, he had one as what, a kid. What, what, Red Band was a kid in the 50s. Uh, <laughs> there were no tube toys or whatever the fuck. I don't know. It had, like fucking, it had like sea creatures and shit in it. You, they know what I'm talking about. Okay. So hold, All right, let's hold on. on a second. So what do you think your dick is capable of? Like, what, what do you think you I have? don't need lotion to jerk off. I just drop the top over and over and over and over and over and over again. Are you serious? And over and over. All right, uh, ladies, who's he who here is fucking a guy with an uncut dick? Make some noise. Don't be weird. You're in a safe space that's being I've produ- never heard the room more quiet. Because <laughs> they're all in the closet. All night. It's been two hours. I've never in my life She's like, don't worry, it. honey. I won't say it. I won't say it, honey. <laughs> we, know we're, <laughs> we know you're embarrassed of your dog dick. We know. <laughs> no, it's like super easy to... It's, it's easier. I don't know. It's easier to jerk off, dude. How do you know? Have you ever jerked off a circumcised penis? <laughs> Uncircumcised penis? Yeah, I jerk off my own. No, I'm saying have you ever jerked off a circumcised penis? How do you know it's easier? What if... The, what if I don't know, Tony. You can whip it out right now, though, dude. I got you, dude. No, I don't... All right, that I was I dumb. Don't, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't like guys that work with cars jerk me off. You know what I mean? A little bit too rough of a hand for me. <laughs> a little bit too rough. Yeah, I don't know, dude. All right. Are you on the secret show Thursday? No, sir. I would love to have you on the secret show. Hell Thursday. yeah, dude. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. The Lord works in mysterious ways. You already have one of these, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Ladies and Ooh. gentlemen, make some noise for Michael Ridley, everybody. Yeah, dude. Thank you guys Walking so much. Walking out here with Don't a gel blaster. Glasses. Wait, wait, Michael. Don't forget your glasses. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. And like that, he's a white man, everybody. Look at that. <laughs> or a Latino. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. We got through everybody that we possibly could for a live taping of Kill Tony. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here with a brand new minute is the man who has written more brand new minutes than anybody else in the show's history. Currently headlining, selling out everywhere he goes. One of the most dangerous features in the island of North America. Opening for Rogan, Hinchcliffe, Segura, Trussell, all around the country. He's going to Denver with me this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Big Red Machine, William Montgomery. In Prince Harry's new book, he described Elvis Presley's home Graceland as a dump. Um, Prince Harry, I'm actually from Memphis, so don't be talking shit about Graceland, you ginger piece of shit. (laughs) Ironically, Elvis started his life at the very bottom and worked his way to the very top. And Prince Harry worked his... God damn it! Ah! This microphone smells like shit. I don't know whose mouth. (laughs) Ironically, Elvis started his life at the very bottom and worked his way to the very top. And Prince Harry started his life at the very top and worked his way to the very bottom. (laughs) You fucking British piece of shit. (laughs) Prince Harry literally describes Elvis Presley's house in Memphis as, and I quote, a badger's den. Newsflash, Prince Harry, but Dadger, Badger Dens are nice. <laughs> I actually use the Badger Den, a- Den app every weekend, uh, and I book some Badger Dens, so they're... <laughs> <clears throat> they're called a set. Oh, what's that, Prince Harry? You didn't know a Badger's Den is actually called a set? 
Well, I learned that in Memphis, Tennessee, home of the king of rock and roll, something you'll never be. <laughs> you want the good news or the bad news? Uh, okay, the bad news. The bad news is Prince Harry called Elvis Presley's home in Memphis a dump. The good news, Elvis is still banging his mom in heaven. <laughs> Fucking ginger piece of shit! Okay, that's my time. Wow, William Montgomery. Unbelievable performance. All the jokes hit. Even your uh, Even misreads the... went extremely well. <laughs> yeah, my Something mystery. about you fucking up a joke, which is so much funnier than anybody else fucking <laughs> up a joke. I know. I, it, gets, it gets horribly nerve-wracking. I was smoking dope back there again tonight. I promised myself I wouldn't, but I was smoking some blunts, and I was laughing so hard. David went so hard after you. <laughs> Holy shit. That was funny. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I can't believe fucking the Duke of Sussex is talking shit about where I'm from. He needs to keep fucking Memphis out of his stupid fucking mouth. I, peep, I think people are sick of the fucking royals. He needs to stop talking about fucking Memphis. Okay. All right. Really knows how to pick his battles here. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm coming after you, Prince Harry, you piece of shit. <laughs> I'm not fucking around. That was the last fucking straw. I've always hated fucking Prince Harry, stupid fucking ass. Wearing his fucking Nazi costumes. He's literally a racist. And he better not catch me in a dark alleyway because I'll fucking kill him. I wish I was kidding. How would you, <laughs> how would you kill Prince Harry if given the chance? Probably a gun. Oh. Yeah, just walk up to him and be like, Oh, Prince Harry, hello, sir! And then I'd fucking shoot him right in the fucking food. Yeah, he talks like such a bitch. It's like I can't even take him seriously. With that stupid fucking ass. You know what I'm talking about? Holy shit. Oh my goodness, you are something else. What a riot. <laughs> what is it about Prince Harry that makes you so mad? It was literally when he, I had so many trials and tribulations back in Memphis. When he fucking brought that up, I literally had so much rage just boil up inside of me. I mean, the fucking Duke of fucking Essex is talking. Duke of Sussex, I think he's from. <laughs> okay. All right, William, what else has been going on in your world? Any new hobbies or anything? You're always up to something. We've seen you eat soup. We've seen you get sponsorships. We've seen you eat raisin bread. There's so many different things <laughs> that's always going on in your personal life. I'm excited to find out what's happening this week. It is my birthday this week. Oh. Um, so I've already, I've already been at the TCBY Treats. I've already been fucking designing an ice cream cake for my birthday. So really excited about that. I was at TCBY three hours earlier. <laughs> but yeah, excited about designing the cake. I'm really excited. We'll be in Denver together. I'm really excited about whatever present you're going to get me. I've been dreaming about it. I'm just wondering what Tony's going to get me for my birthday when we're in Denver. Ah, have you ever had 80 popsicles at once? <laughs> <laughs> I actually have not. <laughs> I know a guy. And if you like dirty jokes, you're in for a treat. I love it. What else? There must be something Yeah, that else. guy was kind of strange. Are you still cutting he hair? He seemed nice, but... Are you still cutting hair? We found out... Yes, I actually booked 15 clients last week. My place is literally filled with fucking hair. It looks like I have a carpet. I normally have hardwood floors, but there's hair everywhere. I don't really know what to do with it. I don't have a broom. So my fucking, it literally is like a carpet. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's literally like a carpet in there. But yeah, I have a bunch of clients. I'm getting new ones. Uh, so yeah, if you need a haircut, just let me know and I'll be able to help you out. Oh. I say no. <laughs> D, D Madness will not let you cut his hair. If you were, if you were going to cut D Madness's hair, which literally is a work of art. I mean, it is beautiful. This guy somehow, some way, has the best style and swag out of anybody every night. On there's no, Tony, there's no way I would ever cut the hair of a fucking blind person. Holy shit. Wait, what? Wh wh 
Why, why do you say it? Because he you... might complain afterwards, but I would know in my heart that he really doesn't know what it looks like because he's blind. <laughs> but I have a horrible, I have a horrible just thought. He would bitch about it, and it would end up turning into a big fucking thing. And I just start coming over to his house with my gun in my hand, just standing in front of the kitchen, fucking. Oh, he's standing up. Just in his kitchen, he doesn't know oh. I'm there. Hey, hold on, hold on. Huh? Yeah, D madness. Especially since something like sprouting black spaghetti, you would not be able to do this. <laughs> that is, he has called it black spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> black, winning. black spaghetti. Old black spaghetti. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I was just picturing that being the color of the spaghetti he actually eats because he probably burns it all because he can't see. Oh, my God. William. William. It's all brown spaghetti. (laughs) First of all, you boil spaghetti. (laughs) What are you, out there pan frying spaghetti, William? (laughs) Yeah, it's been a new thing I've been doing. Literally, I'm going to make you some. You got fucking, you and D-Madness are fucking... (laughs) Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, well, I wouldn't trust your fucking ass either. So. <laughs> I'm glad it's finally coming out after this amount of time, us being on the. F- huh? Yeah, I never said cut you, so shut the fuck up. Okay, oh well, I would God. never cut your fucking oh ear. My goodness. Don't worry, I would never cut your fucking ear. Oh <laughs> my God. God. This. Sounds like, <laughs> this is one of the wildest fake arguments I've ever seen yeah. in my entire life. <laughs> they should go for spaghetti together and make up. What? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> they should go for spaghetti and make up, he said. Yeah, I fucking heard you, dumbass. Oh, my ass. God. <laughs> yeah, I fucking heard you, what dumbass. What is up with my regulars attacking the guests lately? I'm so angry. Yeah, I love seeing David come after your no, fucking you ass. Stop, you stop it. <laughs> You I stop. fucking loved it! I'm gonna kill Prince Harry! No, I'm not! No, I'm not! There's no better way to end an episode. We do it the same way every <laughs> week. William Montgomery. Oh my god. I feel like we've been through so much together in just a, a couple real hours. Roller coaster. How loud can this place get for one of the greats? Tom Papa, everybody! Watch his new special, What a Day, on Netflix, streaming now. The drawing is in from the great Ryan J. Ebelt. Let's get a glance at that right there. He drew tonight's episode while we all sat here laughing around. He's out in LA. And let's check out Chris Rogers' homage to the late, great Michael Lair, everybody. There it is. Should we auction that fucking thing off right now? Who wants to place a bid on the Michael Lair thing? Fucking 50% goes to uh, Colette and... uh, Uh, I'll, I'll do $500 right now. Ooh, 500. Is anybody gonna beat 500? I don't think any. 800 from the great Franceschini. I- I'll do $1,000. Whoa! Kirk's an art collector. $1,200! Red Band's out. I love it. How about a hand for the great Franceschini? Check out. We love him. He's the man. And like that, Chris Rogers makes some money. Little Colin Lair, who we love. Michael's son just made a little bit of money. He also has a Kickstarter right now. Uh, There's a Kickstarter for uh, Michael Lair's son. Yeah, there's a GoFundMe, a Kickstarter, something like that. So go check that out. Find that. Uh, and uh, nothing but, uh, of course, I, I was smart enough to say it every time he was on stage, but of course... Michael is an absolute legend. We have nothing but love for him. And uh, even though we all saw it coming, it was a rough week. And uh, so thank you to Colette and uh, his nurse slash girlfriend and his son Colin for everything through the whole time, if they get to hear this. Anyway, we love you guys. How about one more time for the band, huh? (laughs) Michael Gonzalez. John Bees. D Madness, Matt Muling, Paul Deemer. D Madness has his new line of clothing. 
available online for sale and here at Vulcan. If you guys need an extra shirt or a hoodie on your way out, but the official Kill Tony after party starts now. Check out Tour Life uh, brand clothing. That is John Dees' company. On top of being one of the best musicians in the world uh, and the leader of the band here, a lot of you might not know John Dees, who uh, came on first onto the band, has hand-selected every single band member. I completely trust him with it, and he's brought us nothing but greatness. So how about one more extra hand for John Dees this week? All right, we did it. Love you guys. Love Let's you all guys. party together.